Hi everybody, my name's Jared from Buckable Model Trains and we're here with DCC Fridays episode number 12 um, having a look at the Roco Multi-Mouse this week uh, a little bit of an older throttle uh, out that's been available on the market for some time now um, I'd say off the top of my head at least 10 years or so now um, correct me if I'm wrong but it's yeah easily at least 10 years I believe um, so yeah, we're just going to have a, a very brief look at the multi-mouse, particularly how, um, yeah, how it sort of works. It's quite sort of European in design, so a little bit more unfamiliar for some of us uh, modelers down under. Um, so let's dive straight into it. So when you start your layout and when you plug in your command station, whatever that may be, whether that's some sort of Roco system, um, I believe this works with uh, I'm, I'm gonna say, I th I'm pretty sure it works with the Z21 systems. Um, it definitely works with my DigiKeys DR5000 system, which you can check out numerous other DCC Fridays videos, some of them including uh, how this is actually connected to it, if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, this throttles, it's quite versatile in that sort of sense. It can be connected to a number of systems. Um, back to what I was saying though, um, once you have actually powered on your DCC system, and you've connected your throttle using the uh, supplied six pin connection connector here. Um, this is, you may recognize this is similar also to the LocoNet um, connectors. It's a six pin phone type connector. Um, I'm sorry, but the, the actual specific sort of code for it always escapes me, but it does have a proper um, specification. Um, that's That simply needs to be connected in. This is running on ExpressNet protocol for those using the DR5000 or any other device, just to let you know. Um, so when it is plugged in, I'll show you this because this looks neat. When it's plugged in, we get this very nice multi-mouse um, text coming across the screen. And then you'll notice that, um, or in my case, we've got the, the DCC address three and also the locomotive name three selected here. Um, I'll come back to that later. And you'll notice um, there's a nice little image of a steam locomotive and we've got a flashing stop uh, here. Now, the most important thing when we start is that we'll, we'll see this flashing stop and that means that track power is off. Um, to turn track power on, which is gonna be a pretty key first step, quite potentially, is we turn it on by pressing the stop button. Now that this turns on and it, it, this, the stop button either turns on or off track power. So if I press stop again, it'll come back and flash stop. Now, if a short circuit is triggered by the command station, um, I'm not sure I'm in a position to create a short circuit at the moment for you to see, but you'll see this come up also with a little sort of lightning bolt next to it. And so to clear um, the system from shorting and this is a little bit crucial as well if you have a short circuit the track power will automatically turn off and then you actually need to come in here on your throttle and press stop again and then that will clear the the short circuit and your track power will come back on as shown by the lack of stop up here okay so having a look at the throttle we've got these kind of buttons here you might be wondering what those kind of do they um, let us scroll through um, the locomotive library. So this throttle, um, unlike other brands, actually it stores uh, your locomotive entries in it. I'm not sure how many can put in. I think it is quite a lot. So I don't think you should have any issues there. Um, so you can actually give your locomotives a particular name. So for instance, let's scroll through and find something that I've given a... Um, text a name with text now we go lock seven for instance or um so these are some european locomotives that i um ran many years ago or i mean technically still do but um in in kind of my past i was a bit more of a european modeler than new south wales modeler we can see more of an australian appropriate locomotive such as 3830 so that could be helpful for maybe say british modelers european may, maybe american modelers maybe Australian modelers, um, but using text to name a locomotive is a bit different. Um, 
Now, I don't think there's any way at this point here in this screen that we can see what particular DCC address is assigned to this particular locomotive. However, um, you know, whatever lock seven is, it, it's obviously, it's your lock seven, um, provided you haven't changed the DCC address anywhere else, um, it will be correct. It will be what, it will be the DCC address that you have set up this particular locomotive with. And you may be wondering, okay, well, how do I set this up? This is all well and great. You've got lots of locomotives in here. How on earth do I do it? So I'm going to walk you through that because that's probably a next key step is, well, hey, I want to add a locomotive so I can drive. So I'm going to bring the throttle out here so we can see. It's a bit tricky, but we have to um, press the shift key. This is the shift key here. And you'll notice that this shift arrow then comes on while it's pressed. I'm going to release and press C. It's coming on and off. You need to press shift menu and then you will see you've got loco so there's a couple other things in the menu you want to just stick with loco and then press okay so next and then we see new comes up now that's pretty self-explanatory um, the locomotive menu is it is dealing with our locomotive library so we want to enter in a new locomotive so let's in enter in a new locomotive now um, you'll notice we've got the um, flashing kind of lower bar cursor thing, a little bit sort of more of an old school thing rather than our um, flashing vertical cursor. Let me see on computers these days, but nevertheless, still makes sense. Now, I believe from this point, you can start entering, or yeah, let's let's enter in some text. So maybe we'll, we'll press, should be able to press this once. Yep, for D. So this, it's like using an old mobile phone where if I want to, you know, get to, E, I just keep pressing the same key, if you're sort of following. Um, oh, hang on, now I'm gonna go, I think I can backspace, yep, like this. I wanna put in, we're gonna be really cheesy and put in DCC Fridays or something. Um, so we'll do that, C. Uh, I believe I can then enter in a space by doing, pressing, by moving the, the cursor over here. Oh, maybe not. No, there's another way. Hang on. Maybe it's with the zero. Ah, uh, yes. It's either, you either get zero or, whoop. Get back. Or space with this, with this zero key. So I press it once. There we go. I've got a space. DCC. Uh, let's do, so I could do F like DCC Fridays, but we're going to put in a three just for, that could be one way of, you know, labeling just the default address three. So we go, okay, cool, that's cool. So we've named our locomotive. Hope that'll make sort of, sort of make sense. As you saw there, the, the number in the order that it's placed in this key, the number then appeared as I kept pressing the button for things. So if that makes sense, we're gonna press okay. And now this, this point here lets us, this lets us set our DCC address and it can be a, what, you know, whatever it is, if it's a one digit address, two digit, three digit, four digit. Now, of course, that's got to be, um, that's got to be set up on the locomotive already, but let's just hang on that point that I'm just saying now and see, it, it may actually give us an option to program it. I've seen that happen sometimes. So let's just say, okay, DCC address three. Okay. Um, oh, error. That's exciting. Oh, maybe it's not letting me do three because I've already got a loco in here with the address three. That could be why. <laughs> Let's try 33. Okay. Okay, cool. And then you'll notice we've got, um, we can do any of the different, this is speed step. So I'm gonna, it's just going to leave it at 128. I, I wouldn't recommend really changing that unless you have a preference otherwise. And then, okay. Yep. Yeah. Now we're, we're presented here. There is the ability to program in this if you would like to set your address, um, but I may not get to that. We'll just we're going we're so far eating up a lot of time. Um, so that that shows you there how we can add a locomotive. You know, say you buy this system or you get a multi mouse, whatever, and you've got a couple of locomotives that are already DCC or you get them DCC by somebody and they set some addresses. You know, yada yada. Um, this shows you how to you can kind of name it, put in put your address in, and then this will actually stay in the throttle forever. Maybe kind of handy, you might like that. Um, and then, you know, you can move around to 
Oh yeah, there's actually, when you scroll in the library, my library's quite big, so I wasn't sure if I'd get to it, but there is, you actually reach a certain point when you're scrolling through left or right that you'll reach a point when it comes up with new. I think you just press OK and then you can go from there. So that's another way to do it. Easy. Cool. So we should probably talk about how you drive a loco a little bit, because that's a bit important. So when you're driving a loco, you before you want to drive it, a pretty key ingredient is you might want to put your headlights on. So this um, appropriately labeled key here, if we press it, brings up a little thing here, and that is your function zero, um, function zero um, headlight function button, okay? Um, so that, that gets you, your headlights on. If you, you'll notice there is zero here, so you might go, oh yeah, that's F0. That is actually F10, as I've just turned on there. Um, you might find that a bit counterintuitive. Well, that's how they've kind of designed it. So, and then to, to, to drive, simply, um, it's a, you know, some throttles have an encoder wheel, some have a, um, a, a potentiometer knob that, that like starts at this point and then we, you know, crank it all the way up here. But this is a center off controller. So this is, it locks in position here. You can see it's locking in. And then to drive uh, forwards, we just simply do this and it does stop here. And then to drive in reverse, we go this way. Now you'll notice that that arrow follows the, um, the way I'm, I'm manipulating the actual rotary wheel here. So, and you can see now that we're pause. Um, so, you know, if you're familiar with that sign from, uh, I guess, audio, video, stuff, TV stuff, <laughs> um, and then going this way, okay? Other function buttons, if you're particularly running sound logos or you've got, you know, logos with other functions and other keys, is as simple as just pressing, you know, one, and then that activates F1, function one. Function two, you know, your horn. Function two, unfortunately, um, for those who are used to a horn F2, you know, being a non-latching key, which is the case with Digitrax and NCE, some fairly big systems here in Australia, um, F2 does latch on. So if you press it, you're not going to get a short horn blast. You're going to get a horn blast for as long as F2 is activated, depending on your sound decoder, okay? that <laughs> It is dependent on that. Um, F3, F4, F5, F6... F7, F8, F9, and then the zero is F10, as, as I mentioned before. To access higher functions, you can hold down the shift key and press shift, you know, holding down the shift. I've got the shift held down the whole time. I've then pressed one, turn one on and off, two. And then if you notice, if I release the shift, it then goes away because then we're addressing our lower functions. So if I then go back to the shift, these functions are still on and then back to here, these functions are still on. If that makes sense, so these are our functions, F0 being a little light symbol up to F10, and then this is showing up F11 up to F20. So we can control up to, um, well, technically it is what, 21 functions, because if we've got, we're counting zero as well. So you can control up to, from F0 up to F20, which could be quite handy, particularly for sound locomotives. Now, if we turn, turn all of these off, um, you can, if you have D DCC digital points on your layout as well, you can, um, you'll notice this is pretty much the key, the only key we haven't covered. Um, this is the locomotive or turnout um, point key. So if you press that, we can then see um, T for, I guess, turnout, um, and then the address. So it's as simple as putting in, you know, if your turnout address was 45, punch in 45, then I believe, yep, you don't even have, you can, I think you can press OK to stop the flashing, but you can just jump straight to here and you can see you're going to have closed or thrown um, or, and then this, you know, this will of course control up any other DCC functions. Like if you've got a, um, a signal or something that's that it's going to be either you know, things that are either on or off or you know, closed thrown in that sort of orientation so it's going to be able to deal with any of that kind of stuff which could be quite handy for you too and you can then once you're done here you can you know go 55 i have pressed okay that works um you can send a close command send a throne yep press this and then we're back to our locomotive now i believe you know wherever your loco is at driving and you go to here 
nothing gets interrupted in terms of the locomotive driving. You know, that, that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Um, so that's pretty much everything that's going on here. Um, if for whatever reason, let's have a look here. I just hit shift menu, back in the menu. Um, this is programming. We might, I don't think we'll go into that today, if that's okay. If you're really desperate, let me know. I don't want to drag this out too much. Um, but the key thing for us English speaking people, if your throttle for whatever reason isn't in English, um, or, you know, you want it in German or something else, um, we can go to, we went into settings, I hit okay. Um, we've got display settings, backlight, blah, blah, blah. There's uh, lots of things in here. Make sure you come across to reset info. Oh, I'm gonna have to find where this is. Info, no, I don't know what that is. No, um, I don't wanna reset it. Speed, don't know what, oh no. <laughs> oh, here we go, good. Okay, this is like user stuff. User interface, excellent, good. Yes, this is, so this is what I was wanting to jump into. Um, there's some other things here I don't even know about, that's fun. But I was coming here, I'm getting very distracted, just to come to language. So if you've followed along to this point, language, and then we can select English, um, I believe French, yep, Italian, um, Deutsch, German, or English, so we're gonna stick with English. And I've just pressed okay there to clear that. Or you can press stop to go back. Um, and we scroll along this way, okay? So just to go through that again, we went shift menu. Um, it's now popping up with three. So you might start at loco. Come across to settings, so shift menu, settings. Come across to user interface, and then make sure you select English language. Thanks all for watching and um, uh, stay tuned for more DCC Fridays videos and let me know if you um, want me to cover anything else at all. Um, this was a very specific video that was actually requested by somebody so I hope they um, hope you enjoy this and um, this is you find this helpful um, but until next Friday or thereabouts we'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.